I'm always ready. Excellent. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> well, Adriana Girdler, welcome. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm very well indeed. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know Adriana and her fantastic YouTube channel, Adriana Girdler is a Canadian project manager and productivity specialist with a fantastic YouTube channel that you really do need to go out and check after you've watched this video um, yes. and subscribe. <laughs> uh, she does not dissimilar videos to the ones I do, uh, but she has a very different style and a slightly different take on things. So very much a complimentary channel. So I'm really pleased to have you here with us uh, today, Adriana. Well, um, thank you. I'm, and I'm, I'm actually very pleased to be here too. Big loving. <laughs> Absolutely. But we also want to find out a little bit about what makes you tick as a project <clears throat> manager. So the first thing I'd like to ask you is, um, what are your three top tips for project managers? Okay. Um, I'm so glad you asked me this question because I get asked it all the time. Um, <laughs> there's, there's three core things. There's going to be more than three on my list, obviously, yeah. and probably yours too. But if I were to say the top three things, the number one thing is you really need to have a really good, well vet out charter. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's even a little bit more than what it gets to find in um, the PenBoc, which is our uh, tool from a PMP perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just it has to be really well defined. You got to be very clear of all the elements in it and use it as your tool in preparation for the kickoff. Yeah. So I find too many times individuals will have a kickoff and then they sort of go, okay, now I got to gather my information. But it's like, you need to gather your information when you get your marching orders first, yeah. create your charter and then launch. So your charter is a very critical piece of document at the beginning of the project as it sets the tone and the way people are supposed to work, the expectations, et cetera. So that to yeah. me, Number one project management tip. Um, before, you, before you go on to yeah. your second, because different people from different traditions um, and different parts of the world use the term charter slightly differently. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, overlapping, but there are a number of different words and there are a number of different. So just to make sure people understand what you're referring to, what, what do you consider the main components of a project charter, the must have components? Yeah. So um, the must have components, you'll have to forgive me. I actually have templates and stuff that yeah, I, would, I don't have in front of me. But it would be um, the justification as to why you're doing it, the mm -hmm. actual scope statement, the ins and outs of the scope, yep. um, what are the high level milestones that you're expecting, what is some assumptions around the project, like the initial assumptions, what are some initial yes. risks that you may be aware of, um, do you have budgets in relationship to it, because you know there are some projects that obviously everything has a budget associated with it, but some project managers actually don't manage the budget, they're just told to do it and it's kind yeah. of they do it, right? Um, it would be who are the initial team members that you need to have on there. And then I also throw in there some rules and responsibilities of expectations that I want from everyone, the documents that we're going to use to guide us in this. So not only do I talk about my charter, but I have a whole slew of other documents that with expectations. And last but not least, more important, I make everybody sign it. Yeah. So uh, no, seriously. Um, no, I, 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 I like that. Sign it because that's how I get everyone on the same page. And the beauty of this document, this is why it's such an important one, is all projects have politics and people issues associated with it, right? Everyone kind of has their own agenda. And I find when I ask people to sign the charter, because I can't make anybody do anything, I actually am very forthright and request that you sign it. Majority of people who have no issue will sign it. They're like, yeah, I get it. Anyone who has issue with signing it, I find those are the individuals I have accountability issues with. Yeah. And it's really nice to know that up front because I start working with them one on one to get them past their concerns yeah. or their lack of accountability, because that's a big problem in projects, our lack of accountability. Yeah. Right. Uh, the charter that I use and I get everyone to sign it. I get mm. ex senior executives, the, the sponsor, the, the uh, steering committee and the project team members, mm. particularly the project team members, because there's so much information in there that they need to do yeah. and my expectations of what they're going to be responsible for. Yeah. And, yeah. I, know, and I know that a lot of the listeners who might be at the start of their career are thinking that's quite a big, scary kind of ballsy thing to do. It is. Um, <laughs> so my tip, my tip for them, and I'd be interested whether you've got any, any other tips is, is actually win the support of your sponsor. Cause you're delivering the project under the guidance of your sponsor. They've got the real interest in it being successful. If you don't feel you've got the personal kind of gravitas or clout to do it, then get the support of your sponsor and, and, get that individual to put their weight behind the initiative. 
Yeah, and, and that's a really, uh, you know, that's part of the initiation stage of the project, right? You know, connect with your sponsor. Your sponsor is your your guide to help you ensure the success because your mm-hmm. success as a sponsor's success this is probably linked to a strategy or initiative that yeah. they're trying to implement. So that's what the sponsor's job is to ensure mm-hmm. that you are successful. And so that's a fantastic idea. And, and it's interesting because how do you get people to sign? I, I agree. The first time you do it, it's really scary. Yeah. But what I usually is I'm quite transparent. And when I kick things off, because again, and here's probably maybe it's not necessarily tip two, but it's in combination with, uh, well, you can make it tip two (laughs) is I make the kickoff meeting the, the, after I'm done the charter. So I have this charter and I have, and I give it as a pre-read. I bring the team now together saying, Hey, we're now all part of this project. I've gotten your approval from your manager. Like, obviously there's a lot more work that you do prior to, And now let's go through this. And then I'm saying, look, I need, what I would like for you to do is to sign this. Commit to me that you're willing, that this is, you're in agreement with everything said here. And if you're not in agreement, then we have to have one-on-one conversations to figure out why. And that's just business. You're not, it's, you're not pointing the finger at anybody and you'll be surprised. Majority of people were like, Hey, okay, I'll sign it. And the cool thing about it is when issues pop up, because they always will, You may not pull on that charter immediately, but you can go back to it and then have a one-on-one conversation. I can say, hey, Mike, you signed the charter. We agreed to these ways of working. Um, Can I ask, you know, what's your roadblock that now all of a sudden you're not able to commit to what you you agreed to commit to? So it takes away emotional charge. It's just a really amazing tool. And I highly, highly recommend that individuals have some sort of document that lays everything out and people sign off on because all of a sudden now you're responsible for it. Great. So what is number two? My second project management tip is uh, communicate, 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 communicate. And by the way, if I haven't said it yet, communicate. (laughs) Sorry, I didn't catch that. What what are we supposed to do? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I know. And, and it's interesting because I, I think like I see a lot of uh, newer project managers so overwhelmed with the doc because documentation is and paperwork is a big part of what we do. Right. Because yeah. uh, we have to keep people on track. But I think what people forget is communication is really critical for all stakeholders. And so we have to communicate up to our sponsor and our steering committees. We have to communicate laterally with our project team members. We have to communicate outside. To any stakeholder, like the um, customer who's going to be receiving the deliverable, other departments, because what I find is assumptions uh, pop up. And if you don't nip those assumptions and there's multiple communication channels that you can do, you can do monthly updates, you can do newsletters, you can have specific meetings. Um, It all depends on your stakeholder, but not to have a generic communication for everyone. You do have to be a little more specific. So I may have for my external stakeholders who are really not part of the project, they get a monthly status update, which has some really good communication in it. For my team members, we have multiple communication channels. I use my action plan as a communication channel because they can talk to me in it. And we have a coding system. Mm -hmm. I I have a SharePoint site where all the project documentation sits on. You know, for my steering committee, it's going to be meetings because they're really busy and they don't read emails. At yeah. all, so I have to reel them in into yeah, a let's meeting. Let's not forget to that in, in the communicate, communicate, communicate <laughs> thing, the weakest form of communication is emails, and, oh, and my goodness. relying on those is pretty close to not bothering with the communication at all. Yeah, and or putting action items and tasks into yeah. an email. It's like, no, don't do that. We have, you know, we have documentation for that. Um, And then my third tip, and it's so hard because I want to say a couple of things I want to talk about, particular documentation, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say team dynamics Mm -hmm. because I, you know, as a um, consulting firm, I have tons of clients and I'm actually managing um, a really large global project for one of my clients right now. And, you know, the team dynamics actually is something we're dealing with right now. So even though we're very clear, everyone signed off on the charter and we had a really good kickoff and where we meet and we're, when we meet, it's not about updating. It's like literally about brainstorming, you know, creating stuff. It's like doing, yeah. doing activities, but you know, team dynamics is really important because I find every single time we get a new person coming in or, you know, someone has a hidden agenda, we go through the four stages of team dynamics. And it's yeah. really important to understand that and call it for what it is. And don't let those things fester because we're not, project managers are not paper pushers. 
Yeah. We're not babysitters either. We're strategic individuals trying to ensure that our deliverable is going to come to fruition with a group of individuals who do not report into us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't report into us. But yet the activities we're doing link to major strategic initiatives. So you have to be creative and you need to set everybody up for success and remove all the roadblocks. And so understanding like team, team issues is what I find. It's not the documentation. It's not even the activities we have to do. What constantly creates roadblocks are team dynamics. Yeah. Someone has a hidden agenda and it's now coming up. I thought I resolved that. And all of a sudden, what the heck? Why did you send that and CC 10 people? Yeah. Seriously? Do you know what I mean? So that's, you know, if you can get really good with team dynamics, um, that's one of the skill sets you have to come to the table and kind of link that with emotional intelligence as well. Yeah. So those are your three tips. Uh, the next thing I'd like to ask you about is a couple of go-to tools that you use. They, they might be software tools. They might be thinking tools, templates, or anything that you could legitimately call a tool. Um, what, are you, what are your favorites? Okay. I'm glad you asked that. So, cause it's good because I was, I was going to say it in the first tip, but I'm actually going to say it here. So um, I am so open to project software. Mm -hmm. However, project software are tools. They are not project management. And I think yeah. a lot of people get that confused. Yeah. So interestingly enough, I say that because I'm always open to really good software, but what I notice is they're just repackaged sometimes in different ways. <laughs> I've been doing this for um, over 25 years or close to 25 years. Um, and everyone out there in you, you know, YouTube land are supposed to say, "Why well, you don't look it. I'm like, thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> 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 but um, I actually use for my action plan that I monitor everyone's activities. Mm -hmm. And that could be from a high level perspective or uber detail, depending on the team and what we're trying to do. Because I try to be very... Um, because I'm, I'm a consultant coming in yeah. to the company, right? So I have to be, have a little more flexibility mm -hmm. and okay, you have a favorite thing, that's fine. Just give me the high level activities is I actually use an Excel spreadsheet, yeah. which shocks some people. Cause like, what do you mean? Don't you use this? And don't... Well, of course I use a Gantt chart for my schedule management, um, but I actually use an Excel spreadsheet to document uh, everyone's uh, high level concepts or detailed tasks, depending on what we agree to because I can, I can divide things in tabs. What I like about it too, is there's a technique called the work uh, breakdown uh, structure mm. layout, where you take your complex and you break it down like an org chart. And that's a technique we're taught as project managers. And what I like about that is you, that technique of a level one, a level two, a level three translates perfectly into tabs in the Excel. So yeah. I can give a department a tab, I can give an individual a tab, and it's very clean. And I use it as communication tool. So that to me is one of my personal yeah. favorite tools. And I like the breakdown and the link to it. So that's really uh, yeah. important that I use and constantly. I, and I think, you know, there is a lot of snobbishness about, so, uh, about software and, and about using spreadsheets. But the fact is that if you are using them for the right sort of operation and yeah. you know their limitations, the fact that they are enormously flexible and not dedicated is a strength. And, and, and also everyone's comfortable with them. So Absolutely. And you know what? You don't have to buy licenses for it yeah. because yeah. that's a big. Yeah. So one of the things about accountability is you need to have the team do what they can do for themselves because yeah. otherwise you're now doing everything. And that's, that's crazy mm. actually, because you don't have the time to do everything. Um, but what I find is everyone, as you said, knows how to use a spreadsheet mm. and everyone has access to a spreadsheet. Yeah. If I start going into specialized programs, the organization that I'm doing work for yeah. may not want to buy licenses for everyone because it's really expensive. So then who's yeah. updating everything? Yeah. Or they may have security concerns, but, then, but they will have spreadsheets on their system. And so absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, so so it's, it's yeah. Ab ab absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. That's a, that's a, that's a great tip. And your second favorite tool. I work heavily with Microsoft teams because actually they're a client of mine and, um, I really like the SharePoint site and the okay. OneNote because for me, I need a central location that everyone can go to and I lay everything out. So it actually looks, it's quite, I call it pretty. It looks like a website, 
but yeah. it has all the key information. So it, there's never, there should never be a reason people don't know what's going on or where to get documents. Yeah. And then the rules as well, as well are when you're done creating your draft, you have to upload it to our yeah. SharePoint site. And then based on that, we now have the ability to go into that document and, and use it. Yeah. So I, that one I rely heavily on because it's a tool to bring everyone together in a central location because yeah. gone are the dedicated internal drives the, that's that's going yeah. away. Everyone has some sort of cloud-based system. So whether it's Teams, whether it's Google Drive or whatever it may be that's out there, uh, the fact is some sort of cloud-based central system that you can go to that houses your project information and you can go into. And then for me, OneNote is yeah. I do not like, we capture notes and summaries and dis decisions made put it in the one note. And because everyone has access to it, it's their responsibility to go in and pull out their task. All I have to do is put a link saying, Hey guys, you know, here's the summary stuff. Here's a link, go check it out. Right. Yeah. So I'm now pushing people to be accountable, right. Instead of feeding it to them in an email, it's like, no, here's the link, go to it. <laughs> so. When you look at one, and again, people say, well, that's not a project management tool. That's a, that's just a generic tool. But the reality is back in the day when we were first using, you know, what, I suppose the very late nineties, the early two thousands, um, when we were first using the, the earliest kind of collaboration tools, we would, we'd have looked at OneNote and thought, wow, look at all those yeah. capabilities. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I have, I'm not going to say fond memories, but I have, have recollections <laughs> of, of, um, Lotus notes. Um, yes. And, yes. And oh my goodness. Of developing <laughs> solutions in Lotus notes. <laughs> You see, now oh most goodness. of our, most That's... of my audience will be thinking, Lotus, oh, what? That <laughs> is what's so Lotus? <laughs> hilarious because that was like, oh, that's a flashback, man. <laughs> yeah. and, and I was at Deloitte at the time and we built, yeah. we, uh, people within the firm built, you know, dedicated bespoke systems out of Lotus yeah. Notes to do the things we needed to do. But now, like you say, SharePoint and OneNote within it and access to spreadsheets that are a lot more sophisticated than they used to be, yeah. pivot tables and all that. Yeah. You, know, you can do so much. And Oh, my goodness. I, and then everyone can work in the same document yeah. without you having to have, like, I used to, because we didn't have the SharePoint site and it was like dedicated G drives. Yeah. I would have to send it out. They'd have to send it all back to me. I'd have to cut and paste everyone's tab, put yeah. it into another document. It was like, oh my goodness, the amount of work was crazy. Yeah. Now it's like, it's on the cloud, go in there. 10 of us can be out there at the same time yeah. and go update it. And great. I'm just going to yeah. read. It's just so much easier. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's just, the world has changed and these kind of tools are fantastic and they make our lives a lot easier. Oh, yeah. So we've got your three top tips. We've got your two favorite tools. So now's the big one. Is there one thing that changed everything for you? It changed maybe the perspective, your perspective you had on project management. It made a big change in your career, the way you think about things. What's your attitude to project management? Maybe what's the one big thing that you can kind of relate to us uh, that made all the difference for you? When I, when I finally got out of thinking project management in the beginning stages of my career was a tactical activity. Mm. And when I finally realized it was a strategic activity yeah, and that as a project manager, I'm here, I'm like the conductor. Mm. I'm orchestrating my symphony, right? And to ensure that everyone is doing what they need to do. And we have a larger strategy. We have a program that we're trying to put out, right? So when I finally got that aha and then realized that, and I think in combination wasn't, I think this is age too, right? Like I'm at a point now in my career, I'll, I'll talk to anybody and tell them my opinion because <laughs> right? I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Whether you're a president, VP, director, I mean, you do it respectfully, um, you do it with the data that you have and you share what's going on. So I'm, I'm not afraid to talk to anybody anymore. Whereas I think when I was much younger, newer, I was very tactical. I felt like I had to do everything. Well, now yeah. I'm like, no, I'm a strategist yeah. who is looking at this and trying to execute this project or program and ensuring that it's aligned with your overall vision and goal. So my job is to remind you of that. My job is to ensure that everyone else is recognizing of that, but also to help them tactically because a lot of individuals have a hard time with that to give them the tools and techniques yeah. to be successful so we can ultimately get it on time, scope, and budget, yeah. right? So that was probably the biggest moment. And then I wasn't, let's be honest, afraid anymore to speak up to senior people who always try to go, no, just do it, just add it. I'd be like, mm. 
first and foremost, you sure I can add anything you want me to add. No problem doing it, but you need to recognize the consequences of adding that. Yeah. It's going to increase cost, or I don't have enough resourcing. And until you give me that resourcing or cost, I now need to push out this timing. Well, you can't do that. Well, then I can't do what you want in the current constraints that I have. So, really challenging in a very respectful way so that we could be successful. It had nothing to do with personality, it had nothing to do with the person. It's about let's think strategically. Why would I strategically say yes to that when I know it's going to create havoc? Yeah. Right. So that was probably the biggest yeah. turnaround. When did that happen? I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe when I really started my own company and I had to be accountable, like really responsible for the customer end result versus when I worked in an organization. <laughs> Well, it was one, it's, it one of the, it's one of the joys of actually starting my project management in a cons oh. big consulting business was that actually we were encouraged to think strategically right yeah. from the start. But when I train project managers, I, I always point out, you know, you can you can be a successful project manager if you don't think strategically. If what you want to deliver is simple, small, simple, low ticket projects. But if yeah. you want your career to, to expand, if you want to be delivering the interesting, exciting projects, at enterprise level, you're, you've got to get your head above the weeds. You've got to see the big picture. And again, you know, uh, give the PMI its due. The focus in the PMP exam, the focus in the continuing professional education on business and strategy is exactly right. I mean, maybe you could argue they don't have enough emphasis on it, but by putting it in there, I think they're, they're giving the right message. We, we have to be business people Absolutely. and commercially minded and strategically aware if we want to if we want a, a, a long satisfying career rather than just basically doing small projects all our lives well here's something else even to consider which i think some people don't think about and i've been you know i kind of i do some keynotes on this because i'm trying to you know bring it to people's attention artificial intelligence mm -hmm. is taking over tactical tasks yeah Okay, they are. And they're taking over tactical tasks in the white collar workforce. Yeah. So for example, a lot of lawyers, when it comes to regular standard contracts, artificial intelligence is doing a really good job taking over that activity. Mm -hmm. So what's really needed as artificial intelligence increases and takes over more tactical white collar activities, right? Because it's all about algorithms and you can program all that out is you need to start distinguishing yourself. And that's where the strategy comes into play. Because mm -hmm. artificial intelligence can't do that yet. Mm -hmm. Creativity comes into play. Yeah. Team dynamics comes into play. Like all of those stuff. So, you know, if you focus strictly on the tactical, at some point you will become redundant. Yeah, absolutely. That's, and that's, that's the future. And you've given us the example. When you talked about the, the things you used to have to do with spreadsheets, but you now do on SharePoint, the next step is this, you know, artificial intelligence, or even not even artificial intelligence, simple robotic process automation, you know, the, the tools are arriving, which will allow the technology to do the things that project controllers are doing. But yeah. once project managers used to do, then we got project controllers in to do that as we grew up. Um, yeah. But yeah, a lot of what we were, what, what we would do now, like putting together Gantt charts and risk registers, they then low low added value compared to building relationships and and motivating people to do good work. Absolutely, absolutely. That's just you know, and so just be aware of it. It's it's not meant to be like a scare tactic, like oh my gosh. But you know what? Don't be an ostrich with your head in the sand either. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, be aware of what's coming down the pike and depending where you are in your career, it may not impact you. So you're fine. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? I'm sure you've had the same experience almost every time I facilitate a session where we we look at opportunities and threats someone will have that insight that hang on a moment surely some of those threats are opportunities and yes. yeah you can you can look at artificial intelligence as a threat to your career or you actually you can look at it as an opportunity to lift your career to a level that's far more interesting Absolutely. than processing spreadsheets and uh and, and risk registers I, I think i think all the points you've made not only are they fantastic points in themselves but they tie together and they make a really nice kind of insight into the way you think about project management which i think overlaps very much with with my thoughts as well so i'm, I'm really thank grateful you. for, your, yeah. for your thoughts there um, thank you before i let you go um i yes. do do want you to uh, tell people that are listening to this uh, and want to hear more from you how how they can uh, find your youtube channel how they can engage with you on social media and where they can find you 
um, out there on the web. Well, thank you. Um, absolutely. My YouTube channel is Adriana Girdler. So if you go to YouTube and the search bar on YouTube, A-D-R-I-A-N-A -A -A, and Girdler is G-I-R-D-L-E-R. -E and I'm sure, Mike, you're going to put it somewhere. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it, but it'll be yes. in the description and it'll, it'll be, be on the, screen. <laughs> totally. And, and, and so, you know, definitely go to Adriana Girdler yeah. um, yes, as well do. as. I'll endorse you can, that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And then I actually have um, an, another uh website called adrianagirdler.com which talks to practical project management that people can look at but i also have my consulting firm which has a lot of great wealth of information mm -hmm. um, which also has all my other social media channels on it and that's cornerstonedynamics.com so i have tons of blogs and you know info for people because i'm a big mm -hmm. believer in ensuring that you know through education we all can become better and I just have a wealth of experience and time behind me, which is, you know, a great thing. Wisdom yeah. to, to share <laughs> and, for those and, who would like it. <laughs> and you have, you've shared, you've shared some really great wisdom with us. And I think if people are, are prepared to listen, I think you've, you've given some really good hints about what will make a, a great project manager and a great project management career. Uh, so and Adrian, feel free to link in with me too. I oh, LinkedIn. yeah, absolutely. Like I, 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 I really heavily yeah. use that. So yeah. by all means. Excellent. So Adriana Gerdler, thank you yes. very much indeed. Mike, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you.